these NVIDIA whales added almost $20 million worth of out-the-money call leaps right before close, before earnings earlier last week. It was about 15 to 17 minutes before the close, they added these 680 call leaps. And the reason they're leaps is because they're for a 2026. However, it went up so much after earnings, these guys were up over 50% just on Friday alone. So they added these leaps before earnings and then they were up 50% on leaps of all contracts. Like that's insane to have that type of a move within a couple days for something that has such a far away expiration. And again, these were almost $20 million worth of premium. So a pretty incredible move to say the least last uh, week on Nvidia. And if you remember my blue box from the last video uh, that I posted on Sunday, of last week. You can see here, we did break below that blue box on Tuesday. So only two days after that video was posted. Remember I said, if we did have that breakdown below, that would be bearish going forward. Obviously with earnings, anything can happen. So it's never a smart idea to hold a trade through earnings unless you understand the risk of that. And of course, with Nvidia, there's a lot of risk of a move to either side, uh, but there was a viable setup for not only the break below of this uh, blue range, but also the retest of it for possible short setup because it did end up going uh, further down um, into Wednesday, of course, before earnings. Now, one critical thing with this is after earnings, it opened well above this range. And remember, this is giving us a directional bias for price action going forward. So because we're now back above it, it is within the bullish realm of uh, price action yet again. So we do have that directional bias to the upside. I expect dips will continue to get bought uh, mainly as long as we stay above the previous range. Uh, so just for a general uh, basis of where we are, if we can stay above uh, this previous resistance, which should act as a very strong support, you already see it did act as a strong support over here on the 15 minute chart. We retested it immediately after the open, after earnings, and it was able to have a large bounce off of here. So a clean squeeze to the upside. So 741.82, definitely a critical level to watch. If we do retest it, which is certainly possible uh, this week or the following, I expect there to be at least some type of an intraday bounce off of it. But as long as we remain above, you will see short-term dips continue to get bought. Back below, you're gonna see chop within this range. It's not necessarily bearish until it can get below this blue box here, which is roughly between uh, about 693 to 697. Um, once we can get below that, then you would see a lot more downside chop in between here and then above will continue to be bullish and those uh, dips at least in the short term will continue to get bought so that's my general roadmap for nvidia and of course there's still a lot of bullish flow coming through however a lot of that bullish flow that we saw earlier in the week and by the way i'm filtering this for all of last week so it's not just one day because uh, obviously these were before um, earnings so this was the wednesday of earnings and then we did see a lot of calls the day following because of course we did see that large squeeze and then there was also some call a uh, selling for profit taking um but with that we actually saw a lot more call selling in the back half of the week so you, as you can see here there's a lot of calls uh, being bought or most likely bought because these were above the ask but slowly as i scroll up you're going to start to see a shift instead of it being a lot of green you're going to start to see some of these call sell orders um, start to hit the tape a lot more. So we're back to green over here, but then start to see some more call sells here. And then as we get to the latter half of the week, especially around Friday, this is when they start hammering the tape with those call sells. So a lot of the calls we saw people buying earlier in the week, kind of like we saw right here and before earnings, they were starting to get sold off later on. Below the bid, below the bid, below the bid, below the bid. A lot of these being sold and a ton of premium behind it too, uh, like 30 million plus in terms of overall premium on these call sells. So very significant overall. And this is a large shift in sentiment compared to what we saw earlier in the week, as well as earlier in the year, because it's been consistently bullish uh, this entire year. So far calls being bought. We haven't really seen large sell orders until over here. And this was on Friday of last week, like I just said. So uh, this is definitely a switch. We saw a little bit more in terms of calls getting picked up by the end of the day, but these were mostly either one closing positions or uh, just last second zero date expiration trades on um, the reason why, as you can see here, the expiration was 223 on these compared to the expiration of a lot of the call sales was around May. So that 517 or around this 419. So April expiration, these were likely uh, being sold, even though you can see a lot of them were above the ask. And characteristically, that means that they're buying them just because of the expiration. You tend to see a lot of these um, hit the tape the day of the expiration and be closed. So it's just a weird uh, caveat for days that the contracts are expiring. Um, so it's just something to note for the future. So these aren't as bullish as they may seem. Uh, so really the meat of the prints that we saw throughout the day uh, weren't 
directionally bullish, kind of like what you'd think. In this case, they're actually more so a bearish or just flatlining uh, with these call cells we saw earlier on in the session. So just wanted to make that clear there because there is a nuance to that. There's a lot of nuance to order flow. Just wanted to make that clear. And also, if we start to see a lot more call selling, kind of like we saw on Friday, uh, go into this week that can provide a weakening catalyst for Nvidia to potentially go back to retest this 741.82 level. Uh, so that's just my overall understanding of where Nvidia is at right now. And I'm going to go over to the S&P 500, a very critical breakout we had. We actually had a very strong breakaway gap on Thursday because of um, Nvidia's earnings, or at least that was a major catalyst for this upside move. And if you also remember in the video I created last week, I said if we did have a retest of around this dark pull range, which is roughly this 493.96 level, there was two levels, 493.96, another one was around 494-ish, but we touched this to the tick, which created a nice squeeze off this level. And that's what I was looking for, a retest of around this dark pull range because of its significance. Remember, it was about $10 billion in overall premium. That is a very significant level slash range. We did have that retest and then a large squeeze from there and then a continuation overnight. And that was mostly due to Nvidia since it had a very large upside move as well. And we continued a lot higher to hit 5,100 on the S&P 500, so SPX. So a very incredible move uh, to the upside from here. Nice to see this retest and bullish bounce, kind of like we talked about in the last video. And that brings us to this week, as long as we remain above where this breakaway gap is. Uh, so if I go over here and draw a rough estimate of where that level would be, roughly around here, this is more so actually of a demand zone. So I could just draw it I'm out very quickly here, but this is more of a demand zone right now, uh, kind of similar to what I had on NVIDIA with that blue box. Uh, but if we do retest that, I expect at least intraday to have some type of a bounce in order for there to be any bearish bias, at least in the short term, it's going to have to get below this demand zone. Remember, this is previously a supply zone since once a supply zone breaks to the upside, it's going to act as a demand zone. We actually retested this as a demand zone, similar to NVIDIA, at least that level I showed you over here of 741.82. And we had that retest immediately at the open and continued a lot higher from there. So in terms of a directional bias, as long as we stay above those short-term dips, we'll continue to get bought. And the reason I say short-term is because I expect we will see a rollover between this market March and April time period. So end of quarter one, early quarter two. Uh, that's my preference at the moment, but we need to base it based on levels. So in this case, I'm waiting for a breakdown back below roughly this range in order to warrant a short setup. And a lot more downside can be confirmed once this breakaway gap fills in the future. But at the moment, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm more so looking to trade the short term off of a bounce around this range. And then potentially if it breaks uh, this range a little bit later, whether it be this week or the following, then I'll look for a short setup off of uh, the break of this range with my risk being an hourly close back above. So that's what I'm looking at right now. My general uh, roadmap at the moment for the S&P 500. Great to see a nice bounce off of this dark pull range as we mentioned in the last week video. And other than that, as always, appreciate you guys watching this video and I'll see you next time.